Welcome to EMN5. My name is TJ Welniak, and this week we're going to talk about acetaminophen toxicity, as well as the rule of 150, and how it can help you manage acetaminophen toxicity in your own emergency department. But first we have to understand how acetaminophen is metabolized in the body. So this is done in a few different ways. About 90% of the drug is actually metabolized by way of glucuronidation and sulfonation, in which small subgroups are attached to the drug in the liver and excreted without further issue. A very negligible portion of the drug is excreted unchanged renally. About 10% goes through the cytochrome P450 pathway, utilizing the CYP2E1 enzyme to create a metabolite known as NAPKI. Now, NAPKI in and of itself is very reactive, very toxic, in particular to our hepatocytes. But luckily our body has a mechanism in place that takes NAPKI, deactivates it by way of glutathione to a non-toxic metabolite that, again, we can just excrete without further issue. But say you're in a situation in which the body has taken in a very large dose of acetaminophen. Now a dose is above 150 milligrams per kilogram, or around 7.5 grams, the body's glutathione supply becomes depleted, resulting in an increased availability of NAPKI, which, as you might imagine, is not good for the liver. What N-acetylcysteine does is replenish this glutathione supply, allowing our body to, again, regain control of the available NAPKI and prevent it from causing any further damage. So the symptomatology of acetaminophen toxicity, if untreated, comes in about four discrete phases. Within the first 24 hours, one may only experience a little bit of nausea, maybe some vomiting, but mostly fairly nonspecific symptoms. Between 24 to 72 hours, one may start experiencing a little bit of right upper quadrant pain. When you check their labs, their liver function tests may start to become elevated. It really is at about 72 hours or greater that they start exhibiting some signs of liver failure, in which you may see evidence of coagulopathy, jaundice, confusion resulting from encephalopathy, now, if someone is presenting at this stage, you really should be considering having them at a center where a liver transplant team might be able to evaluate them. Because the final phase goes one of two ways. Either the patient succumbs to their illness or starts to get better. If one is able to get an acetylcysteine within eight hours after an acute ingestion, there is a high likelihood of avoiding hepatic injury and even getting to the point of phases three or four. To help us with this, we can utilize the rumac matthew nomogram. And this is only good for, for acute ingestions in which you know precisely when the patient ingested a toxic dose of acetaminophen. So what this tells us is that if a level is checked at four hours post-acute ingestion, and that level is greater than 150 micrograms per milliliter, then you should really be considering giving in acetylcysteine. Here I want to back up just a little bit and quickly mention the use of activated charcoal, which if given in an alert patient is able to protect their airway and is not vomiting, can essentially reduce the amount of acetaminophen in the GI tract that is absorbed into the bloodstream. And most of what you'll read on activated charcoal recommends that it be given within one hour of ingestion. But in acetaminophen poisoning, some have even recommended its use up to three hours after a known acute ingestion. So use your judgment with this and please, please, please involve your toxicologist early. Now the Dosing of IV and acetylcysteine is actually pretty easy to remember. You start out giving 150 milligrams per, per kilogram over one hour, follow this by 50 milligrams per kilogram over four hours, and then finish up with 16 hours of a 100 milligram per kilogram infusion. And usually at about hour 20, you're going to be rechecking acetaminophen level and liver enzymes to see if an extended course is indicated. Now, I know that's a lot of numbers, a lot of different information that's thrown at you, but there is a pattern here that you can use to your advantage to remember some of this. And that is the rule of 150. So going back to what one might consider a toxic dose of acetaminophen, we mentioned that 150 milligrams per kilogram is one commonly accepted figure for this. And when we check our four hour acetaminophen level and see that it's at 150 mics per milliliter, we know that we should start an acetylcysteine. And lastly, you'll recall that our initial dose of IV and acetylcysteine is 150 milligrams per kilogram over one hour, hence the rule of 150. You'll have to remember a few things before you can apply this rule to your practice. One is is that you really should find out what units your lab uses to measure acetaminophen levels. Because there are some out there that interpret it in terms of micromoles per liter as opposed to micrograms per milliliter. And please note that the nomogram does not apply to those cases in which you're suspecting a chronic overdose, where you do not know when they took it, or if they've taken extended release formulations. Here you may be giving NAC if there's any evidence of liver injury, even at acetaminophen levels, that would otherwise be far below the line on the rumac matthew nomogram. And lastly, note that the IV NAC regimen is not the same as the PO NAC regimen, which starts out at 140 milligrams per kilogram and has an overall different treatment course compared to the IV formulation that I won't get into.
So to summarize, acetaminophen overdose uses up glutathione, leaving NAPKI to wreak havoc on your liver. And acetylcysteine is an effective antidote that the modified Rumac Matthew nomogram can help us see if it's indicated only in known acute ingestions. And lastly, we reviewed the rule of 150, its ability to help you remember the toxic dose of acetaminophen, your four hour level to treat, as well as that initial IV and acetylcysteine dose to give over one hour. And that will conclude this week's EM and 5. Thanks for watching.